Welcome to my April 2018 lighting tutorial. I'm Michael Corsentino for Shutter Magazine. If you love the tutorials happening here on BehindTheShutter.com's YouTube channel, it's just the tip of the iceberg. Head over to BehindTheShutter.com and set yourself up with a subscription for the print edition of Shutter Magazine, where you'll receive a monthly dose of photography education from some of the best educators in the industry. In this month's tutorial, I am going to teach you how to create colored backgrounds using gels to create the color. Uh, now, what you're seeing here are two different uh, sets of images. Each one used colored gels, different colored gels, to create the color on the background, as well as obviously the color on the face. Uh, now, you could, of course, use paper to do this, rolls of seamless paper, and here you see a couple pictures of some seamless paper. But you'll notice that it, seamless paper takes up a lot of space uh, to store. Uh, it's also what falls into a category uh, known as consumables, uh, which means that eventually they have to be replaced because they get dirty, they get stepped on, uh, they get wrinkles, um, and so they don't last forever. That, the nice thing about gels is once you have them, they last. Rolls of uh, paper are also not inexpensive. Uh, a roll of 10-foot roll, a 12-foot roll of uh, seamless um, can you know starts at about 50 bucks a piece so you know having a whole bunch of them it requires a lot of space as you can see in these pictures and it also uh, requires the budget um, and eventually they have to be replaced they are the right thing in many circumstances when you have a lot of light that you're going to be throwing at the background then you know it's hard to work with gels but in certain circumstances where you can provide enough distance and separation from the background and the subject um, you can create an infinite number uh, of uh, colors with a very small number of gels. So let's take a look at that. All right, so the gel packs that I prefer um, and use are made by Roscoe. Uh, they are 12 by 12 packs of gels. I think each one is about 50 bucks. Uh, they have this, These are just two of the many packs that they, they have a whole line. Uh, I think it's somewhere around 10 packs that are available. Uh, that give you all sorts of different colors. Um, but again, even with just one gel, as you'll see, uh, you can really create a variety of colors by just vary varying the amount of power that you're putting, the amount of light that you're putting through them with your strobe. So we're gonna look at all of that. Uh, but any gel will do. You can also use you know, colored um, plastic that you can find in craft stores as well if you don't have a budget for uh, you know, proper gels. But when you can, you know, definitely get these. They're really great. And they're standardized colors um, as well. So you kind of know what you're going to get. All right. When you're starting out with gels uh, and color in general, uh, you can work intuitively, but you can also find lots of great resources uh, online um, about color theory, and one of them is the color wheel. Uh, and this will show you primary and secondary colors, as well as anal analogous colors, complementary, uh, triadic, split complementary, etc. Grayscale, monochromatic, you can see all of that here. So uh, if you need a little bit of, uh, you know, if you need to get up to speed on color, uh, this is a great resource, and this is just one that I found online. There are tons of color wheels available uh, that have different, you know, features and benefits, and make it, you know, a little bit more clear what's going on. Um, but you can see here, it's very easy to kind of determine, you know, what colors work well together, uh, what are opposites, and and uh, you know what uh, are going to give you the best results. All right, so let's move on to dialing in our color. All right, so uh, and I'm going to show you lighting diagrams and exactly how I have everything positioned, but I wanted to start first off by showing how you can vary just even one gel. So you can see here that I've got a strobe. That's what that black blob is at the bottom of the, the three images. That is a Profoto B1, which is flat fronted, which I prefer for use with gels, and I'm going to explain to you why. Um, but you can see here that starting from um, more power on the on the left, moving all the way to the right, uh, which is kind of where we settled for our first look, uh, which is a very low amount of light uh, output through the gel. So the less amount of power that you have going through the gel, the uh, more intense. Uh, the, 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 the lower the saturation, I guess, or the, or the more saturation, actually, not the lower, the more saturation there's going to be in the color. So you can see here on the left, we've got a kind of a washed out lighter tone, and then it moves to, uh, you know, something that's darker and more saturated, and then all the way to something that is 
our final resting place, as it were, to what is our going to be our final color. And that's a really deep, dark burgundy. And all of that was created with the same gel, with one red gel. So you can see here, you can really vary the color that you're getting out of one piece of gel. Um, and you can see here how that's hung. I'm going to talk about how that gel uh, is positioned in relationship to the front of the strobe later, but th keep that in mind. Um, so let's take a look at where we ended up. That's This is how we created this color uh, for the background, just like that. So it really it works really nicely. And of course, if we wanted it brighter, then we could have just gone with that first color that you see on the left or anything in between. Uh, but I wanted something really dark and moody for this uh, because I think so, it, I think it works well with the other colors with the kind of purple blue and then the uh, amber orange that we have going on on the, uh, on the rim light uh, that we have over on the left. Uh, okay, so let's take a look at the lighting diagram, how we created this image. I want you to guys see exactly what's going on here in addition to just the background, uh, what's going on with the other lights. Okay, so here is our background light. It's placed behind our subject, and obviously there's going to be a gel there in front of it, and that is the, our red gel that we talked about previously. Uh, now I've got cross light happening on the subject, uh, so we've got our purple gel happening here, and our orange amber gel happening here, and they are just kind of providing the light that you're seeing, the color that you're seeing there. Okay, so we've got that warm color here, and then we've got the cooler tone on the other side. Uh, and then I've got V flats, black f facing the camera, uh, which are going to be keeping the light from spilling onto the background because that any kind of spill that you have from your uh, subject lights, from the lights lighting up your subject, are really going to run the risk of contaminating the background because if light starts hitting the background uh, from your other lights, from these lights, right, it's going to create additional illumination which is going to change the intensity of the color that you have here on the background coming from this light. All right, so you really want to avoid that at all costs. And there are a number of ways to do that. Uh, if you have a lot of space and you can really move all of these lights up here much further, uh, then you have less of you know, of an issue to deal with. I don't have that much space. Uh, so this, this light is about seven feet from the background. That's kind of where I was with this to create this color that you're seeing here. Uh, the distance that you place that background light also is going to have a, a direct relationship to the intensity, obviously, uh, because the um, illumination will differ as you start moving it back based on the power that you have uh, for your light. So, you know, obviously if you have a thousand watt light, then you can move it back further uh, and still get that same power. But I was at 500 watt seconds. Um, also, the uh, I am bare bulb here and I use the uh, Profoto B uh, series of lights uh, has a flat fronted opal glass that allows me to just kind of hang the, the uh, gel right in front of it. And that helps eliminate any kind of white light spilling from it. And I'm going to show that to you uh, later on. Um, so also, the distance that you place the background light from the, from the, uh, from the background itself uh, is going to dictate how much spread you're going to get. Okay, so, and again, this is going to become messy, but I want to just show this to you. If I were to place this, let the strobe really close, I would get a real small circle of light, and then it would start to fall off into darkness, okay, like that. Uh, however, let's see if I can undo some of that. There we go. Um, if I place it where it is, at seven feet, I get a much wider circle of even light, and then it starts to fall off into a darker color. So the further that you place it back, the more even light you're going to get. And you can see here that there's a little bit of fall off starting to happen here. But overall, I'm able to create a really nice even tone overall. Okay, so now that we've completely messed that up, let's move on to our second look. So obviously we've changed the gel on the background. We've moved on to a kind of a pink gel. Uh, and again, I had to noodle with the power of the strobe in order to dial in just the right color. Uh, so again, you have a tremendous amount of variation even with one gel. 
Um, and then I am I changed the orientation of the lights to create more of a classic beauty look because I wanted a beauty look for these for this set of images. So I'm working with a clamshell lighting, and that basically that's just an over and under uh, orient orientation, which means I've got a bounce back. Uh, sorry, that's the wrong way. A bounce back umbrella here, and that's providing the blue light. And then underneath, I've got another light, and that is giving me a warm tone, kind of an orange gel is what I had there. All right, that's a classic clamshell, and obviously the camera is here, and here you're seeing it from overhead. All right, so here we've got our clamshell lighting arrangement here with two gels, and then we've got our background light that stays the same, um, and then our V-flats in order to keep the light from spilling onto the background. Now with this, of course, I did have a little bit of spill that I had to take into account. Um, also, when you're setting up your background light, I should have mentioned it at the, at the outset, Make that the first light that you uh, dial in. Turn off all your other lights, dial in the gel color that you want, and then turn on your additional lights. And that will really help you kind of establish a baseline uh, color for the background. And then you'll have to noodle it a little bit if you do end up with any spill. All right. Uh, let's take a look at the strobe. Okay, so what I do, uh, and I have to give a shout out to Jake Hicks. He's this uh, master of using gels. Uh, I learned this from him. Basically, what you do is you just hang your stro your gel off the strobe. Here's a little piece of tape, like so, like that. And that is going to help you eliminate any white uh, light from spilling out from behind the strobe. Now, if you start using tape and you start, you know, pinning it all around the sides and try to cover everything, what you can end up doing is causing more harm than good and ending up with a lot of spill happening, a lot of white light, you know, kind of leaking out. Uh, and that wasn't what I wanted in this case. Sometimes you do. Sometimes you want a little bit more white light, uh, but I was looking for a really saturated color and I didn't want any white light. On both the, um, I, I used this technique on both the strobes uh, that were the uh, key and accent lights as well as for the background light because I wanted that really saturated look. All right. So uh, they work really nicely in spreads as well. As you guys know who follow me on this channel, I'm always thinking about shooting editorially with spreads. So here, is, uh, here are a few of the spreads that resulted. And that's our first look. And here is, oh, wait, I wanted to show you the, uh, there's the lighting diagram again, just so you can see that, uh, just to kind of reiterate where things were placed. And then we have our other look and the lighting diagram is there for you as well. So we can turn that off. And there you can see the spreads look really nice. And let's take a look just to close things out at everything all together. You can see both spreads and both looks. So again, you know, gels uh, are an easy way uh, to create, uh, you know, your backgrounds, different colored backgrounds. Uh, one thing I should mention is you're going to want to use a white wall. I should have said that at the very beginning um, because you, you're going to want to shoot, you, you're going to want to project your gel onto a surface that doesn't impart any additional color. Okay, if you want to be true to whatever is on in that gel. So obviously that can be a white seamless, a roll of white seamless. Um, it can be a white wall. Uh, it could be you know a piece of white foam core, whatever you have at your disposal. But you're definitely going to want something very neutral and white. All right, so that's going to wrap it up for this month's feature on lighting. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Get out there and try these techniques. Hit me up on Facebook. Let me see what you're doing. And until next month, this has been Michael Corsentino for BehindTheShutter.com.